This is the default theme on the alias too. You can see it has kind of an office metaphor, you know, or bedroom, not sure. You move around with the D-pad, um, the virtual D-pad, I guess, if you will, these little buttons down here. Uh, it's Visually, it's a little difficult. I mean, it's kind of cute, but it's a little difficult to see which one's active. Um, luckily, there are normal uh, themes that you can set up. Go into the settings here. And you can see we have a couple of themes to choose from. And this gives us something that's it's far more normal looking. Now, of course, when you're inside one of the menus, like on most Verizon phones, you can move left and right to get through the other menus without going back to the main menu, which is pretty nice. I'm going to show you um, just a quick bit of the voice dialing system. It's actually a voice command. It's speaker independent. does a lot more than just dial contacts. You know, I'm going to press it here and try to get the phone status. Please say command. Check status. Current phone status. Current battery level. Pretty good for hands-free functionality. Uh, you can dial any contact. Uh, it's, it's quite useful. One of the other cool features we've been seeing on Samsung phones recently uh, for Verizon is uh, quick search. So what it allows you to do is easily find contacts by first or last name or anything with, um, without having to go through the contact list. So I'm just going to hit 5, 6 here, as in the letters J and O, and I'm going to hit up on contact the D-pad, you can see where it, there's an up arrow and a contacts written there on the display. And it's going to show Johann Sebastian Bach and John Doe as matching contacts. Now I can also search on the last name, as I mentioned. So if I type 4-2, as in H-A, for hand, and hit up, we're going to see Mr. Hand. So it's nice for searching through contacts quite easily. I'm going to show you how the external music controls work. We activate them by long pressing down on the volume control, and then we're going to hold down the play button brings up a menu, and we're going to hit the center button again, bring up the VCast music, and this starts the player. You, know, you see we can move through the menus, we'll just hit play all. Now this device supports Bluetooth stereo, uh, but you're going to have to use 2.5mm headphones if you want to use wired headphones. And of course you can move from track to track. There's a hold button for locking the external controls as well. The music player, of course, works with the device opened as well. Um, but I should mention that we had problems getting the phone to synchronize with a Windows PC. Uh, it's supposed to be a MTP compatible device, which would work with Windows Mobile, but it seemed to require drivers. No disk was included in the box, and it just didn't work right off the bat like uh, most devices do. So. Um, all the tracks that we have on the device right now were purchased through the Verizon Music Store. We're going to bring up the camera by hitting the dedicated button here. Easy to take a photo. You can either press the OK button or the camera button. Just press it. Takes the shot. Let me erase that one. We'll pull up the settings so you can see what options there are. You can change white balance, ISO, uh, metering modes, all sorts of things, and including the sound effects can change the sound effect. Look here. One, two, three. So we're going to have it do Look here. Look here and then Okay. The shutter sounds. Okay. And you can have the shutter sound off as well. We'll save that. We'll take another picture and this time it'll try to get the polar bear's uh, attention here. Look here. And then it takes a second. Um, takes the photo after a second. The photo viewer on the Alias 2 is pretty weak though. You can see we have thumbnails that we can go through, but we're going to bring up one of the photos. And it's still in a pretty small form. If we go into the options menu, there is, all the way at the end, a full view option. Of course, once you're inside a photo, you can't move left and right to get to the previous or next photo, which is really ridiculous. You have a large QVGA display and they're not making use of it at all when it comes to photo viewing.